comes the sun And I say it's all right Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. Thank you to those who have supported my channel by liking and subscribing. Your support allows me to continue bringing you fountain pen reviews as I am unsponsored on this channel, so thanks. Today's review is of the latest design copy by Moon Man. This is the Moon Man M1000. It is a very close copy, not a fake mind you, but a very close copy of the limited edition Mont Blanc Le Brac. This pen has been on the market for a number of months now, and I've been reluctant to buy it. Not for any self-righteous grounds of moral purity, no, no. I balked at it for two practical reasons. Number one, it is way too much money for a Chinese pen at $67 US. And number two, I knew I'd dislike it the moment I looked at it. But I thought I'd take one for the team and take a look at them because inquiring minds want to know. And also because Alan Light, my colleague from the YouTube channel What I Ink wanted to do another CoPro review. Alan and I will discuss this pen and speculate on the reasons Moonman continues to want to change their name to Moonblanc in a follow-up video we'll post tomorrow morning. So join me as I fall on this particular sword and take one for my Inquiring Minds team right now. <laughs> Well, this is very interesting. I just got this parcel, and on this parcel I purchased from eBay. I'll put up the eBay listing here. Um, I have tracking on it, and I've been tracking it, and it said it was delivered to me last Friday. It's now Tuesday, and so it uh, said it was delivered to my mailbox on Friday, but it wasn't there. And so I went out on Monday, it still wasn't there. And I went out today, Tuesday, and it still wasn't there. So I inquired through Canada Post with my tracking number, and uh, Canada Post had no record of this. I contacted my seller, who responded very, very quickly, and said, they show it's been delivered, so uh, please check with your post office. I'm all ready to go down to the post office and try to find out why something's been stolen from my mailbox. We have neighborhood boxes here in Canada. You've seen me walk to them, trudging through the snow. And we haven't had uh, delivery to our front door mailboxes in years. Uh, but my wife said, well, why don't you try the mailbox? I said, well, why would it even be in there? It's covered in dust. Went down and there it was. This was delivered from Yan Wen. And what I can see here is that Yan Wen is not sending to, well, at least in Canada, they're not sending to Canada Post. It goes through Canada Customs and then gets sent by Yan Wen themselves to a Yan Wen outlet here in Calgary. And they have a, an address and everything here. And then it was delivered by courier uh, to my mailbox, my front mailbox. So very, very interesting that that's happened. They've obviously bypassed Canada Post. They might be doing that in your country. I don't know. I would check it out. Let's open this up. I know exactly what this is. This is a Moon Man and one of these Moon Man boxes. And it is very heavy. I can already tell it's very heavy. You take the sleeve off. There's a Moon Man foil stamped into the top. This is a deep, deep dark navy blue purple blue box and we open it up and there's the pen so this is the moon man m1000 it is a wooden pen with what looks like a stainless steel rivets in it and uh, metal finials on both ends metal clip metal section this is why i balked at this pen for so long also because of the price but the price includes this Bach nib surprised to see it's a very cheap converter international standard but I was also fretting about this because Alan Light of what I ink and I have already agreed that we're going to do a copro uh, video review of this on YouTube 
and so he was just waiting for me to get mine he got his last Thursday or Friday or something like that uh, we'll talk a little bit about the Mont Blanc Le Brock and its value so we'll see is this a steal a copy a fake inquiring minds want to know let's give it a try right out of the box hmm I don't know that I'm gonna like this slippery section but let's give it a try it is certainly a fine nib and what I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen show some size comparisons some measurements and then provide a writing sample after the writing sample please stay tuned as I will talk about what I like and what I don't like about this fountain pen let's begin by talking about the elephant in the room that is most fitting because this is an elephant of a pen but I'm talking about the fact that this pen is a close copy of the Mont Blanc Lobrac limited edition fountain pen note that this is a copy not a fake it does not pretend to be a Mont Blanc but the design is as close as Moon Man can get to the original the original design is of course a Mont Blanc Lobrac Loyal this was a limited edition fountain pen made in collaboration with the French knife maker Lobrac Loyal so it is a pen that is no longer made as far as I can tell the original price was in the $2,500 US range the Mont Blanc was designed to look and feel like a Lobrac Loyal kitchen knife in shape and size it is similar to the flagship Mont Blanc 149 it is a cigar shaped pen and is a or was a piston filler now let's look at the design of the M1000 there is no platinum or silver or grenadilla African blackwood to be found here this is all chromed brass and non-specific stained wood Moon Man has replaced the Mont Blanc emblems of course by putting Moon Man on the cap band and replacing the cap finial snow cap with their mother of pearl like plastic finial insert they've also replaced the piston filler with a cartridge converter Moon Man has in all other respects copied the shape and look of the Mont Blanc it's so close that I'm borrowing one of my reviewers comments and calling this a Moon Blanc M1000 the fit and finish of this pen is remarkable and so I will remark on it this wood finish is the best finish on a fountain pen I've ever experienced here are a couple of other wood pens I own this is the new Jinhao 9056 and I haven't reviewed that one yet and this is the Moon Man M6 the M1000 is head and shoulders above these others now I'm relatively familiar with wood and wood finishes having taught stage carpentry and having many years of experience with acoustic and electric wood guitars as to what this wood might be I guess it is a Chinese softwood the equivalent of a birch poplar or a basswood this model comes in three different colored finishes I'll call them light medium and dark all three are stained to resemble walnut mahogany and ebony respectively here is this dark M1000 against the actual genuine solid ebony of my Gibson J200 mustache bridge so it may not be expensive hardwood like we see on the Mont Blanc Lobrac but the finish impresses me it's not only sanded very smooth which is a challenge in turning softwood on a lathe it is also finished in a satin polyester seal because it is satin and not buffed smooth it will continue to get more and more shiny the more it is touched and handled you might be able to tell that it's getting a bit shinier here on the barrel where it's been handled for just over a week uh, compared to the cap it will also pick up marks as you can see one here that was there right there uh, right out of the box we interrupt this program to bring you a special report and we interrupt this video review to bring you this bulletin while I was editing the video and showing you that little scratch that I got on it right there I noticed in the close-up this now I went back and looked at my video 
of the unboxing and that crack was not there I have not dropped this pen in any way I have not abused this pen in any way and it is only a week old uh, so caveat emptor buyer beware we return you now to your regularly scheduled program but the grain is sealed very very well the moon man m6 and the Jin Hao 9056 don't have that kind of finish on them this ancient bog oak hand turned by Michelle Paquette has a similar quality feel but you can still feel the grain of that oak whereas this is sanded absolutely flush and smooth and then sealed but overall this is a very heavy and thick pen from the top we see a milky acrylic jewel on the finial which is very similar to the one on my other moon blanc the p135 I thought my p135 might have been an anomaly um, as it is milky around the outside and kind of hides that uh, mother of pearl on the inside but I see now it is intentional if so I don't like it lose the milky edges on this acrylic and let the mother of toilet seat inside shine through moon man sheesh do I have to do all this design work for you guys Of course this bit of plastic replaces the Mont Blanc snowflake or snow cap or ice cap or whatever you 4810 lovers call it then the rest of the chrome finial tapers up and secures the clip the edges of this finial are deeply and nicely cross hatched or knurled the clip extends from a notch in the finial and is almost an exact copy of the Mont Blanc clip but to be fair so is this platinum president bad platinum bad down down mini me no the clip is springy and very usable the cap curves up and if we turn it around you'll see one of the trademarks of the loyal knife handles this pattern of stainless steel rivets is a direct copy from the Mont Blanc Labrac only these aren't in silver these are in stainless steel and they are raised up you can feel them then we have a substantial cap band in chrome it is comprised of three shiny chrome bands separated by two frosted bands the last two bands taper towards the barrel the middle band is raised and has moon man embossed three times if it were up to me on the moon blanc design team i would have voted for having the full moon man word lined up with the front and the clip but no one asked me did they well they were wrong then weren't they the barrel tapers slightly down its length and has the three loyal rivets down the front and the back and ends with this bullet shaped heavy chromed brass end finial which repeats the knurled crosshatch pattern on the Lobrac, this is a piston knob of course the cap unscrews with one full turn to reveal a shiny slick tapered metal section and a number six size two-tone box steel nib this is one of the reasons the pen is so expensive we saw this with both the m600 which had a schmidt steel nib and the m800 which had an optional box steel nib let's get a closer look at this box nib before I start ranting about the section I must say these Bach nibs are good looking with their deeply stamped filigree work and the Bach logo it is stamped so deep it bends around the surrounding metal and makes the gold glisten nicely this is so much better than laser etching in my opinion I do wish Bach would stamp the nib size here as well though uh, this is a fine and there is the plastic feed and the nib and the feed are part of a nib unit that unscrews uh, from the section to be replaced and they're also friction fit inside that unit but to foreshadow the writing sample a little bit let me compare this Bach fine nib to this one on my m800 amber they are both fine nibs but look at the tipping material here the one on the right is the 
Moonman M1000. The one on the left is the Moonman M800. They're both fine nibs, but the tipping material on this M1000 is much smaller than the tipping material on the M800. It makes a big difference when we get to the writing, as we shall see. Now on to this section. Not only is it much narrower than you'd expect on a big-ass pen like this, it is tapered slick chrome metal. The length of it is actually extended by these threads and by this tapered bit back here, but none of this makes holding this behemoth any easier. Don't sugarcoat it for them, Doug. Tell them how you really feel about this section. Okay, I will. This section sucks. You heard me, it sucks. That's right, it sucks. I know I discovered a way to make this sucky metal section less slippery on my MT2 by spraying it with acrylic, but I'm not going to do that on a $68 pen. Besides, it won't help me want to ever write with this pen, but I'm getting ahead of myself. The section unscrews to reveal another disappointment about this pen, the converter. At $68 US, we should get a better converter than this sucky piece of plastic. Look at the converter we get on this Moonman P135. Moonman branded with a, a metal piece that can be disassembled. You can take that whole thing apart and clean it out. It's a really nice converter. Even the Hongdian 920 for $16 US has a nice branded converter that comes apart. I show a screenshot of it here because if I lifted it off my wife's desk once more, I'd lose an appendage, and I'm not sure which one. Yes! That! So why do we get this El Cheapo converter on this expensive pen? Because the nib is a Bach, and therefore, this is Standard International. And Moonman will buy the El Cheapo Standard International converters in bulk. In China, of course. That's why. That's my theory anyway, and I'm sticking to it. There is a cap liner, which is a good thing, because Moonman's other wooden pen, the M6, tended to shed moisture through the wooden cap, even with a cap liner. And wood is porous, you know, especially with only a thin lacquer sealant. And of course, the moisture that evaporates through the wood is ink. So your wooden cap ends up the color of your ink eventually. The cap doesn't post, which is a good thing because You'd have your arm in a sling if you'd tried to write with this tire iron of a pen. Oh my arm! It's broken! Good lord. But here's another nice touch by Moon Man. Those rivets line up with the clip, no matter where or how you cap it. In the hand, and this is where I really start to get pissed off. Excuse me. Excuse me. Okay, but that's the last draw. This pen just conflicts me in so many ways. And here is the first conflict. This pen is not designed to write with, at least by humans. Hey, Mongo. Sign, please. So I'm conflicted. At whom do I rant? Moon Man? Mont Blanc? Moonman has just slavishly copied everything about the Mont Blanc Lobrac down to its faults. I don't have a Lobrac in my hand to verify this, but I bet it is unbalanced as this pen is. I mean, look at this. Well, look at them. When I hold this pen in my hand, it falls up. The center of balance on this pen is about there, which means that it falls back. When I let go of it, it falls back in my hand. So you're constantly pushing it down towards the paper to write with it. And when you push it down towards the paper, this slippery section and all that weight now directed down in that angle, it wants to slide through my hand. So what do you do? You grip it tighter. And on that metal section, that just causes fatigue. And this tension is just the opposite of the whole idea of relaxed cursive writing. It's horrible. It's the most horrible thing I've ever seen in my life. So I'll yell at Moonman. Come on, you guys. You have the obvious ability to manufacture a pen with this level of fit and finish. And don't get me wrong, folks. I'm totally impressed with the quality of this pen, other than the converter, that is. But Moonman has design smarts, too. 
They didn't slavishly copy the stipula when they made this T2, did they? No. They made it an even better pen by replacing the stipula piston with this spring filler. Awesome. So what's up, dudes? What's up? At least they could have replaced this heavy piece of brass with a chrome-covered plastic knob that unscrews to reveal a captured extended converter knob. Now that would have reduced the back weight and made this pen as cool as the Leonardo Memento Zero. But no, you couldn't even do that on the M800, could you? You could have made the section out of textured aluminum, like this Moonman T1, but no. So then I rant at Mont Blanc, but they stopped making this pen in 2012, 30 years before I could afford it. Dude, I don't get it. I don't get it either. But they didn't make the pen to write with either, did they? No. They made it to be collected or given as a prize gift to be displayed. Who would write with a $2,500 brick? I suppose you could stick a Sharpie in the section and that would make it of some use. This pen retails for $67 US and is horribly overpriced if you ask me. The Bach nib isn't worth it. It might be worth it since some of them are good, but why take that 1 in 1000 chance? Now let's look at some behemoth comparisons. And here's the Moonman M1000 with a Platinum 146. Oh, I'm sorry, a Platinum President. A Moonman M6 a Jinhao 9056 and a Jinhao 159. And just for grinners, here it is with a fully wen ancient civilizations. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted, thems that post. It should be noted here that the fully wen ancient civilizations is a large and heavy pen, but it posts. Even though it is long, but unposted, it is nicely balanced in the hand and actually writes very nicely. So big heavy pens don't have to be paperweights. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine a 90 GSM paper. And this is the Moon Man M1000. And it has a fine steel nib. And the ink today is KWZ Aztec Gold, which is an iron gall ink. Let's check the wetness. This pen is plenty wet. And here is the swatch for the KWZ Aztec Gold IG, along with some Robert Oster Golden and some Diamine Desert Burst. This Desert Burst, I say Gibson here because this is a, a color that is made after the Gibson Les Paul electric guitar color Desert Burst. As to line variation, that's no pressure. That's a little bit of pressure, so it does bend a little bit. This is not stiff Chinese steel. This is German steel, and it's a box, so it does have a little bit of line variation. And because it starts off so thin, you do get uh, some variation to it. This line, however, according to my Richard Binder chart, comes out at 0.3 millimeters, which is a Western extra extra fine or a Japanese between an extra fine and a fine. That Bach was 0.3 millimeters. This Bach in my M800 is 0.5 
millimeters. I'm not saying that 0.3 millimeters is better than 0.5 millimeters. I'm just saying, pick a lane, Bach. Which is it? And of course, I hear my Dimmeister friend Jack saying, well, there's Bach and then there's Bach. And for our quote, And for some reverse writing, it is very scratchy and dry, uh, but regularly it is very smooth and nicely wet. And some quick writing. No problems keeping up whatsoever. So, what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? Okay, folks, I'm going to insert a commercial here so you can go to the fridge and get a beverage of a sociable nature because we're going to be here for a bit. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Are you back? Comfy? Good. What I like about this pen first, because it's brief. I like the fit and finish and engineering quality of this pen, minus the converter, of course. It is truly well made. The finish is excellent. The rivets extend out and are nice to the touch. The chrome is shiny. The mother of toilet seat is a bit cloudy, but it is a good looking pen and there is no doubt about it. But that doesn't compensate for it being a total failure as a writing instrument for me. Why would anyone who loves to write want this pen? I can't think of a single reason. My pen! My pen! My pen! It is overpriced for a Chinese pen with a German nib that has huge quality control issues. We see that with Conklin and Leonardo switching over to Yovo. I know I've heard many voices say they have Bach nibs, especially the titanium Bach nibs, that are excellent. That's great. And if $67 US is just milk money for you, I still don't see why you'd want this pen. It is just so hugely unbalanced that it is clear that not a lot of thought went into how the pen felt in the hand or on the page. I'm talking Mont Blanc now. But doesn't Mont Blanc make a ton of pens that are train wrecks as writing instruments and more likely designed as objet d'art? I know the Mont Blanc Hitchcock is an even heavier pen than the Lobrac, being made of sterling silver, but my friend Alan says his has good balance. But you can't tell me that these Mont Blanc limited edition models weren't designed with economics rather than ergonomics in mind. Again, I don't have any of these Mont Blancs. If you disagree, please send me your limited edition Mont Blanc to try, and I'll repent if I'm wrong. And I'll admit I've written with a precious resin Mont Blanc 149, and it is a beautifully balanced and exquisite writing instrument. But that is their flagship fountain pen for fountain pen writers. I also must admit that I just drool at the sight of a burgundy Mont Blanc JFK. But this M1000 doesn't make me drool, it makes me foam. It is a shame Moon Man can't harness their obvious pen making skills and design skills to make something unique instead of copying an overpriced desk ornament. Unless you have $67 US for a pretty paperweight, I'd pass. No offense. No offense. And don't forget to join Alan Light and myself for a discussion about this pen that we will post on both of our channels tomorrow morning, January 24th, and join in the discussion by adding your comments. See you then. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching.
And that's all she wrote. I made this.